Manchester City were the same when they were um, in a similar position to us. And they went down into League One, uh, I think it was in the 80s, and they come back. It's taken them a number of years to get to where they are now. So we have got the potential as our fan base to be able to, you know, fill a, fill a really, really big stadium, but it is going to take time. So welcome back to Small Little Alliance FC. And it really is an exciting time to be a Birmingham City supporter, particularly as we've recently had the news that Birmingham City Football Club have purchased the Wheels site very close to the current ground, St Andrews and Knighthead Park, which is 48 acres in site, and I've got major plans for that development. And in this video, myself and Matt are going to discuss what that means for Birmingham City and what it means for our future. So I'm just going to bounce this straight over to Matt and say, well, you heard the news, Matt, so are you excited? Well, it's funny you say excited because there was two emotions that sort of hit me when I read the announcement and they were complete polar opposites. It was excitement, but also a little bit of sadness as well because, you know, St Andrews is all I've ever known. Dad, you took me to my first game in 96 against Barnsley. We've had some amazing memories and amazing times, haven't we, down there? We have, yeah. Uh, and me and you, we posted a video about two weeks ago now about possible stadium locations. I don't know whether you picked up on this, but I was overwhelmed with the amount of comments from Blues fans that said and supported St. Andrews and the love for St. Andrews. And yeah. they said, we can't move. And the love for the city centre. A lot of people were passionate about having the uh, new ground in the city centre because there were there were rumours around NEC floating around, wasn't there? And, and Which, which yeah. took us technically on the borders of the city. And there was a Blues fans a little bit upset with that. So I was really impressed, Blues fans, with and taken back with how much love there was um, for St. Andrews and that historical element. But for me, that was the sad part, but the excited part is, you know, uh, uh, exciting future. They're building, they're investing. Um, it shows that they have a plan. It shows that they want this to be a really big yeah. hub of football, hub of entertainment for Birmingham City, not just the football club, but the city in general as well. And it's really exciting. And I just want to read, uh, if you, I'll get your reaction from it, Dad, just what Tom Wagner said about the uh, the purchase. And, and he said, so... Um, when he was asked for a quote, he said, we're not competing against other clubs in our city. We're not competing against other clubs in England. We are competing against Netflix, Apple, YouTube, and every form of entertainment you can think about. That's where people are spending their time, and that's what we try and need to capture. That's amazing, isn't it? Uh, and that shows the vision that uh, these owners have got for us. Because one thing that really sort of came out for me, when I obviously read about the purchase of the site, it made me realise that this is actually a real game changer because anybody can come into a football club, can't they? And they can make all sorts of promises about we'll do this and we'll do that. And nine times out of ten, it never actually materialises. But these owners have actually said to us they're going to make us into a world-class uh, not just the club, but the infrastructure and everything around the club. So this should give us Birmingham City supporters the confidence to know that these these owners are serious. They're serious about what they're going to do. There's no way they're going to commit to a major purchase of an area of 48 acres of land unless they had some real plans for it. So that's what made me real, really... I don't know, really proud, really, that, that these are now our owners, that they've now are starting to implement what they said. And yeah, at the moment, clearly, at the time of filming, there's a lot of concerns about where we are in our league position and we've got the rest of the season to. Of course there are. But these are really uh, an, an, a sort of a glimpse into what they are truly going to do with us and our football club. And I just think it's absolutely amazing, if I'm yeah. really honest. Yeah. And people are comparing it to, you know what Man City did with the Etihad? Um, they've yeah. kind of got, it's not just a stadium and a training car, it's like a whole complex. Yeah, uh, it's absolutely humongous. And Gary Cook had a big involvement in the Man City uh, uh, building of that training ground. So I think that's the bar that's going to be set to the standard of which this is going to be built. I'm not saying we're going to have a training camp the size and this, the quality of Man City. I'm just saying that's where I think the vision's going to be and the bar's going to be set for uh, their standards. And uh, well, well, what surprised me is if you look at the graphic that's just going up on the screen right now, the the site is much bigger I than I even thought it was. I mean, yeah. I, I didn't really know that much about the wheel track. I knew where it was. Obviously, we supported Birmingham City all our lives, so I know where it is, but I didn't realise the extent of the size yeah. of the site. If you look at that graphic, um, it's it's really, really large. I mean, the you'll see as well on the graphic, just near the bottom, you'll see the site of the current St Andrews at Nighthead Stadium, which is round about six or seven acres. This is 48, so it's, you know, it's Massive. seven, eight but times bigger. Be because me and you did the video on the stadiums, and we didn't really have a preference, but we did a lot of pros and cons for each location yeah. and a lot of the cons for the wheel site was that we're just kicking the can down the road and we're just moving our problems two, two miles down the road however I didn't anticipate the size of this plot that they're buying and actually 
they're going to create a city within a city. I think that we're going to have our own parking complex. We're going to have all these different issues that we mentioned on the previous video. All those will go away just from the sheer size of having 49 acres. Yeah. They're going to be able to have restaurants and bars if they want to. They're going to be able to have entertainment complexes. They're going to have a stadium. They're going to have the training ground. It's massive. 49 acres is huge. So the the uh, possibilities they can do with that land and what they could do with 49 acres is huge. And um, again, I was on social media just gauging what Blues fans were talking about. And I'm sure you want to uh, jump in there as well but there's a few things we can talk about one is the capacity and, and crowd size two is um the size of the land which we just spoke about the 49 acres three thousand jobs are going to be created from it apparently which is going to be brilliant um the appeal for the next generation and then obviously gary cook's vision in the context of man city and, and the etihad so there's a lot of buzz around social media there's a lot of great conversations um but the big one which is capturing a lot of conversation is capacity and uh sort of the crowd size which we're going to get down there which is an obvious thing which is going to grab people's attention isn't it well, it's going to be big because the the um, information that's been put out so far, and we're only in early days, obviously. They don't just talk about building a stadium. They're going to build a super stadium yeah. because they want it to not just host football events but other events as well, concerts and probably maybe other uh, major, major major events. So um, based upon that, I mean – I'm thinking maybe fifty thousand. I don't. I, I don't know. Maybe fifty thousand as a. Yeah. Again, I'm only speculating. I really, really don't know. But they also talk about um, you know the, the the remainder of the site as well because I think the plan would be that the training ground would also be with on the site as well. Um, yeah. And there's lots of other possibilities as well because the club have always made it aware uh, clear that they want to ensure that they have a venue which is not just a stadium, it's everything else that can create commercial activity, uh, bring in further income into the club. And that's how you build your club. I also think as well, I've also been seeing on social media where other t uh, fans of other teams, and some in particular, as you can probably guess who I'm talking about, um, have been saying, well, you can't even feel your exist existing stadium. That's what they're saying. But the problem is, is that that that, that, is, that is actually true at the moment. Let's let's let's, let's be honest. We, you know, we we're not filling St Andrews every single game. That's absolutely correct. But that's talking about the here and now. Exactly. The, you know, the, this is about a team that have been in in Birmingham City have been in decline for the last ten years. We've um, been in the relegation battle for the last seven or eight years. So the fan base is there, but but at the moment it's a very um, sus suspicious fan base in that we always expect the worst at Birmingham City, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it takes time to build that momentum. And as they start to increase the commercial income into the club, the, the crowd and the fans will start to come back again. And and I think that, that Birmingham City are looking at the medium to long term view, yeah. not where we are right now. And I yeah. think that's where the misconception is. Are you not even filling your existing stadium? Manchester City were the same when they were um, in a similar position to us. And they went down into League One. Uh, I think it was in the 80s and they come back it's taken them a number of years to get to where they are now so we have got the potential as our fan base to be able to you know fill a, fill a really really big stadium but it is going to take time I completely agree and I got on the last video we did. I got called out massively in the comments for not being ambitious enough uh, with the, with the capacity and stuff. And I hear you. Put my hands up. I own that one. Mm. Um, but with the conversations I've been hearing, I think somewhere between fifty and sixty thousand. So let's land the average in the middle. And I think this stadium's going to be somewhere in around fifty five thousand. I do. Um, and as you said, that future proofs it for expansion at the club. That future proofs it for whatever concerts England games whatever whatever they want to use that stadium for that makes it a whole uh, a future proofing attendance and crowd capacity for me and I think you know if we're in the Premier League and we're regularly winning or we're in the top half of the table I think we could sell out somewhere between 50 and 55 I really do you know we saw we saw it in the Premier League where we were selling out 30,000 yeah. uh, every single week when we we're in the Premier League and we talk about you know uh Blues fans' confidence being low. Blues fans, we've been through the mud, haven't we? We've been through the wars, you know. Um, so I think if we do start to have a bit of success on the pitch, those numbers will follow. And I and I have no doubt we, we would fill somewhere between sort of 45 and 55,000 uh, pretty regularly uh, in the Premier League if we were winning games. But yeah. and, and, and you said, the key that you said there, the key, and I really want to hit this measure, don't think about the now. Don't think about the short term. Think mm. about 10 years, 15 years. Where yeah. where do we want this club to be? Big picture, thinking big in that in that time. And... Um, yeah, I completely agree. Somewhere in that space, and I have no doubt in that time, if we grow, ah, sorry, as we grow, not if we grow, when we grow, 
uh, those numbers will come. It's also worth mentioning as well, this is subject to approval by the, the council, and I think there's a meeting fairly soon uh, where it's been recommended that the council approve this deal. Uh, and as part of that deal, Birmingham City have a pay, uh, agreed to pay for all the surveyors' fees, and the council will be committing a £19 million uh, regeneration or levelling up grant to help clear up the site as well. So I think that um, this is, without knowing it, this has been going on for a while, because uh, you know we've always been speculating, haven't we, since the new owners came in by what they've said we've been reading between mm. the lines but we don't need to read between the lines anymore it's cl clearly obvious that they've bought that site to provide us with a, uh, a brand new uh, stadium and infrastructure for the club yeah. so there's no more and that that now tells us that the, these owners are doing what they said that they were going to do and you know like I said at the beginning of the video this is really exciting news yeah. really exciting and I think all Blues fans should be really excited about yeah. this. And there's a few fallout things for me which I've read which I was really excited about as well. One was 3,000 jobs. It's always good to have your club benefit in the local economy and, and helping, you know, getting jobs. I really, yeah. lo I really love stuff like that, embedding yourself in the community. It's going to be on uh, near Curzon Street. That's a HS2 stop-off zone. Yeah, massive in terms of uh, clientele from London or you know other parts of the country. Uh, that, that that that's a massive thing. Um, and two is it's going to make it more accessible for families. You know, people can't get to Wast Hills. People can't always get to yes. he to Henley and Arden. If you have a city centre-based training ground, trains, buses, it's a lot more accessible to young families who want to get their kids to the training ground. Massive, massive uh, a positive for that one. And then as I say, for me, I think the vision is Cook has got his eyes on what he did with Man the Man City training ground and that's the vision. It's going to have a stadium, it's going to have a training ground. But I think Blues are going to take that one step further. I think we'll have an entertainment hub in and around us as well. There'll be bars, there'll be restaurants. Um, I think it's going to be like, as I say, a city within a city because uh, I had no idea how big 49 acres was. Um, but it's massive. So. I, I think it's always... And now, this this is somebody who's got a lot of stick recently, but I think we've got to give some credit to Gary Cook here because he, his fingerprints are all over oh, this. I can hear the... Uh, I know, I, I know, hear... I know. Okay, fair enough. He, he dropped the ball completely with Rooney. Let's accept that, okay? But, but, but obviously, with what he did with Manchester City, this has got his fingerprints all over it. So he would have been heavily involved in this. You know, he, he, he no doubt would have been involved with the consultations to make this happen as well. So, you know, credit where credit's due, you know, You've got to you've got to respect the fact that this doesn't just happen. You know, there's going to be lots of works being done behind the scenes to make this deal happen. Yeah. And I think we have to give uh, people credit where they deserve credit. And I believe yeah. him, along with the rest of the team at Birmingham City, need a lot of credit for this because it's a big, big thing for us. This is. Yeah. I'm going to put that sound bite about Gary Cook at the start. Subscribers, <laughs> views, <laughs> likes. <laughs> um, but you know, no, there's, there's there's a lot of stick out there for Gary Cook mm -hmm. at the moment, and and. You know, you could you could argue rightly so. You know, that Rooney thing was a big, big thing to get wrong. But um, it's funny, isn't it? Because they've done everything right, Knighthead and the new owners, apart from that one decision. But that one decision was absolutely catastrophic. Uh, so uh, it, it's 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 interesting how we move forward. But, but, but for me, just to wrap it up for me, I'm really excited. Genuinely, it's a really exciting time to be a Blues fan. Um, I think this club is moving on to bigger and better things. I think the sun will soon shine on our part of the city. And I'm looking forward to the day. And I think it's going to be somewhere between 10 and 15 years maybe before this even really comes to light but I'm I'm going to I'm going to soak in St Andrews as much as I possibly can during that time remember all the memories we we have had there but for me onwards and upwards bright future and I'm excited for what this holds for Birmingham City yeah, I think it'll be quicker than that do I you think, think yeah I do yeah I think you know I, I think you said 10 10 15 years uh, uh, 10 years, I'd, I'd say personally minimum, and then 15 years just buffering for stuff like that. No, no, that, that? no, no, no. They'll they want to move quicker than that. I, yeah. I, I think you're probably looking between five to seven. Something okay, like. wow. Yeah. I, I, I mean, reckon, you're uh, the building surveyor. Is that is that feasibly possible? Yeah, we, we, because, because um, obviously they've bought the sites off Birmingham City Council, so they're going to be favourable to whatever the development yeah. is. And clearly, it's all going to be subject to planning permission yeah. and all the other approvals. But um, I can see, you know, the City, uh, Birmingham City um, Council are, are going to be a big part of, um, you know, making this happen. Mm. Uh, maybe not financially, because we know at the moment they're in a bit of a mess, but um, yeah. definitely in uh, doing the approval. So I can see this happening much quicker than that. I mean, to be honest, my 10, 15 years, based on naivety, I'm just assuming that that's how long things take to build a stadium of... Well, I, I hope thousand, it's not, I hope but, it's not 10 to 15 years. I want to be around to see <laughs> it. But, <laughs> You're in that but, old. Uh, no, I know, but uh, I, I, um, I think it'd be, I, you know, five years maybe, I think yeah. is where we Don't leave me doing the channel on my own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you'll be fine. You've got your two youngsters that will be coming up behind me anyway, yeah, so yeah, they'll, yeah. they'll replace will be a four-year-old in there next <laughs> week. Yeah, definitely. But uh, it, it, is, it, it is good news. It is. You know, it's a, it's a big 
big statement from the owners to say, yeah, we're committed to Birmingham City. Um, the fact is, you know, it's right in the heart, it's still in the heart of Birmingham, yeah. and uh, which where really where it should be. And even though we're speculating about other locations, this is where it really yeah. should be. Yeah, okay, we are going to have the issues in terms of the traffic and whatever, but I'm sure they they will start to get um, discussed and resolved when they start to look at uh, where the exactly the stadium is going and how they're going to get large volumes of of uh, people to and from the stadium and stuff like that. Yeah, because there's no point in denying it. The NEC was a another hot topic, wasn't it? And and it was a popular location for people. There was lots of positives to the um uh, to the NEC, but then there was just as many people saying St Andrews City Centre. It was like I felt like it was a bit of a 50-50 split in the comments of our last video about the love for St Andrews and the love for the city centre and then the idea of somewhere around in and around the NEC. But that's gone away now. Uh, yeah. it's been yeah. officially uh well not official but I said pending that council meeting uh, in the next coming days that we will be moving to the wheel site and I, I'm all for it and I'm excited and yeah as I say this is a brilliant time to be a blues fan. Yeah, to totally agree. And it'd be great to know what you think, Birmingham City supporters. I mean, it's nice, isn't it, to have news like that after the years we've had um, that have really been, you know, really, really difficult for us as a, as a football club. Uh, hopefully, you know, this is a sign of things to come for us now. Can we look to better and bigger things in the future? We'd love to know your comments. Uh, as always, you know, uh, please feel free to add a comment below about what you think about the site and, uh, you know, whether you're excited about it and uh, maybe what you think the capacity of the of the new ground uh, should be. Uh, so add a comment below, let us know. And also, uh, don't forget uh, to give us a thumbs up and like the video if, you, uh, if you'd like to do that. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you also press the subscribe button. And don't forget to follow us on X and also Instagram and you'll find our handles on the screen and you'll also find them in the description to this video um, uh, just below. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the video and myself and Matt will see you on the next video.